I did a, a course in emerging technologies, using emerging technologies for teaching last year, and it was the most eye-opening and enriching experience. So this year I reworked my second year module um, to take advantage of some of those emerging technologies. Mm -hmm. Feeling a little bit on top of the technology, but not entirely secure. Um, so I, I was quite brave, I thought, to, to venture forth and do what I did with it. <coughs> I did a number of things. Um, this is the course, it was a second year module, Intro to Sex, Gender and Sexuality. There were 104 students and 80 of those wrote the exam this year. I changed some of the, the marking system and mark allocation. So what I've done in previous years is I've given students work during the semester and then expected them to draw on that work to write a final essay and loaded the final essay quite heavily in terms of marks. I changed that this year. I gave them work during the semester which I assumed they would use to do the final essay, but that final essay didn't count very much. The, the work that they did through the semester counted way, way, way more. And then I did a whole lot of techno technology things. I had a course blog that was part of voluntary for students. There were work, uh, weekly worksheets. They were on the, the e-teaching site. Um, and there, there's one every week and they had to do four. They had to write 500 words. There was a discussion forum that was compulsory. They had to make five posts, and I, I didn't care what they did, what they said, as long as they made five posts. There were no hard copies of anything in the course anymore, and I used Turnitin, and I, so I marked online through something called Grademark that's part of Turnitin, where you can just drag, drag and drop comments. I used Twitter, um, and I told students to follow me on Twitter. <coughs> And I also put a lot more work that students had done and made it available to them on the e-teaching site in, in various different kinds of ways. So there was a whole lot of stuff that, that changed um, through the technology. And I got a teaching and learning grant then to explore the impact of that. So the teaching and learning grant was about in what ways is gender a key subject location to shape student experiences of us. Um, and we did two focus groups with 10 students, follow-up interviews with four of those, plus one who was um, floating through the department who hadn't been part of the focus groups. And I did a, an online eva evaluation using Google Drive, Google Docs midterm. And then there was an end of term online course evaluations as well. And then the, I got somebody to, do a, to look at the discussion forum and explore, write me a report on the discussion forum. And this particular presentation today, I want to talk specifically about the discussion forum because it, that was actually quite a mind-blowing experience for me. Um, it was astoundingly successful. And so what I'm talking about today is some preliminary thoughts about that, but I found it fascinating. Um, in terms of the forum statistics, 48 students posted more than the five posts that were required. 14 students posted the minimum of five posts, 24 posted between one and five, 27 posted nothing. And the staff, two tutors posted nothing, three tutors, tutors posted one, two, and four posts. Zulfa posted, she's one of the senior tutors, 15. And me, me, myself, I, I posted 126 <laughs> times. Um, it massively increased my interaction with students. So even though it looks like I was really busy on the discussion forum, it was actually a privilege. It was very, very interesting. It was a little bit, if you can imagine, sitting in the student union and the students having a conversation and there you are invisible, part of that conversation. It was, so it was really cool in that, in that sense. I engaged on the discussion forum by weaving comments. So I would, I would see what they had written and then I would say, and I would go in and I'd say, interesting that Sipo says wada wada wada. Um, because if you think about what he's saying, it's actually very similar to what um, Norma was saying when she talked about this last week. And so I was weaving their names in rather than just going in and saying something. But I'll, I'll talk more about now. now. Um, how the students used the discussion forum, they went wild with it, really. Uh, they were giving, putting YouTube clips on there. So an example was an anti-discrimination rap song about differences in sexuality. Um, and Disney stories clip about masculine and feminine role models that was made by students in some American university that they found. So I was going in and seeing these things and, and checking them out and then saying, you know, have you checked this out? This is really worth seeing. Because um, there really were some astonishing things. 
um, students were posting links to other bits of information that may have been that were overlapping with what we were doing in class. They were making um, references to contemporary events and media coverage of contemporary events. The course, um, I should have said this earlier, the, the, we use theory to think about a set of key texts and those key texts are student bodies in this world and contemporary events. It's about real, real life. So um, the, 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 the texts we, like, we consider are kind of everyday life, if you like, everyday life and events. So it was quite easy, I suppose, for them to make these connections, but they were making the connections. Um, they also shared opinions and ideas in response to what was happening in class. So I had a number of guest lectures, I showed a number of films, and they responded to that. So we had a documentary about intersex, and an intersex act activist came to class, and um, they were, the students said, was mind-blowing, I was blown away and shocked. All in all, it was a mind-blowing class and it opened my mind. Um, we also had people from uh, the Gender Sonka, Sonka Gender Justice group come to talk to the class, and students made comments about that also that they, they found it fascinating. So they were sharing their responses on the forum, which was then generating more um, discussion with students and allowing me to comment on that. There was also some debate as well, um, so students would be asking each other questions such, would you rather, so for instance the uh, intersex documentary argued very strongly that intersex babies should be, there should be no secrecy and there should be no surgery, so students were saying well what, what would you do if it was your baby, and then another student whose mother is a nurse said well actually her mother had dealt with a case that three weeks earlier that an intersex baby had been born in Tigerberg Hospital and what, what, what. So there's a whole lot of conversation around, well, what would you do and what should you do? And it wasn't, a, you know, students weren't taking an easy option of just agreeing. They were, they were arguing with each other, but in very respectful ways. Um, there was also a lot of reflection. Um, so people started to talk towards the end of the course about how they could take these learnings out into the real world after the course had ended. And um, people were saying, well, you know, we need to educate our communities and I'm going to do something in the church and it, so on and so forth. So there's a lot of reflection about what they could, how they could use their knowledge to change their worlds. Um, I used the, for, the discussion forum as well to model critical thinking and to reduce hierarchies. Uh, there's something else I wanted to say around that. Where am I? I've forgotten where I am here. So they were talking, they were being very critical about media representations of something. I can't remember what it was. And so somebody had made some comment about, well, Lindsay had said this. And so then I said, well, I'm usually right, but you know, there's no guarantee at all that your, your lectures are right. So you can. You could have a kind of joking conversation with the students in ways that were um, that reduced hierarchies. And as Michael was talking earlier on, that positioned the students in some ways as experts in the everyday texts that we were we were considering. That they could actually show me something that I didn't know. They could show me lots of things that I didn't know in fact. Um, I didn't, so I didn't use the discussion forum to teach, and I didn't use the discussion forum to tell. I used the discussion forum to amuse them, to provoke them. So somebody earlier on was saying uh, questions about, would you have, I think it was Denise was saying questions about, would you have an abortion, or would you have a... So those are the kinds of questions that I was asking students, or they were asking each other, actually. Um, so I tried very carefully to reduce those hierarchies between the teacher and, and the learner. Um, in terms of the technology, students articulated a lot of anxiety right at the beginning of the class. Um, they were, this is from the, the, one of the focus groups, they were, they were freaked out. They were I remember at the end of what, the first class when I was talking about this and somebody saying, I'm going to drop this class because I can't do all this. And I said, just give it some time, just give it some time. Um, so they were, they were freaked out about it. 
they weren't alone, to be honest. <laughs> there were more than one of us that was freaked out. But having used it, they started to talk about it. Um, and it was very, very positive experiences, as they, they start to talk about here. I think it gives, it gives me more motivation to learn. I mean, it's easier, it's there, and it makes life more interesting as well. Whereas reading a book, it doesn't work for me. It made learning that much easier because we could feed off each other's, each other people's, off other people's information. Maybe just a small sentence that was said on the discussion forum was knowledgeable for us. We could learn from it, feed off it. Yeah, like before, I had my course reader. I would look at the readings on the course outline, and then at night when I can't sleep, I just go onto Google and find the reading and read it, and then I know, okay, tomorrow I know. So they were talking about it being easier and how it didn't feel like work. For this course, I find it more interesting than my other courses, and I think it's because we interact on the internet more often than others. It doesn't seem like work. It just doesn't seem like work because it's on the internet, and it's just a discussion. It just doesn't seem like academic work. It's like Facebook just scrolling down, reading people's comments. So like in your mind, it's not like academic work, so you don't feel like it's work. Well, at least not for me personally. So, it, I mean, that for me was, wow, I've got the students thinking about what I want them to think about, and they don't think that's work? <laughs> How cool is that? Um, it also provided space for them to offer their views in a less public forum. And this was a very interesting one. Um, so we'd had... What, what is called the technical term for those of you who don't know it's a Twitter fountain and I had a whole conversation in class and we had this Twitter fountain <laughs> scrolling behind where the students were making comments and somebody had made a comment I'd, I would, I'd asked about what are, how do you be a real lady in the barn and people had said things well, you can't be a real lady in the barn <laughs> How do you be ladylike in the barn? You can't be ladylike in the barn. Well, if you're in the barn, then you've got, to, you've, got to have a, you've got to be drinking out of glass, you can't be drinking out of a can, and so on and so forth. And one of the students had said, well, you know, you just got to be proper. you just got to be proper. So I'd commented about that on the discussion forum. And so the student that had said this on Twitter, that you've got to be pro proper, um, I'd commented then, to, her answers that this was actually quite an important thing that somebody had said. But first I dismissed it and I thought, well, what does she mean by proper? Let's unpack that. So over a day or two I thought about it and I made this comment on the forum. And I, she, we had a conversation then on the discussion forum. And then I, in the class I wanted to know who it was. Because it was a very positive and constructive conversation on, on the discussion forum. So in class I said, who is it? And there was absolute mm -hmm. stony silence. She wasn't going to, nobody was going to admit who it was. So I just assumed she wasn't there. But then in the focus group, it turns out that she actually was there. Um, but she was never going to admit to being there. So it was very clear that there were, and she wasn't the only student who was reluctant to um, speak out in class. I mean, a number of them talked about that. Sometimes in class, I feel like I want to say something, but I'm too scared. And physical reactions of heart palpitations, palms sweating and stuff. So I keep quiet, and later, I just go onto the discussion forum and I write my opinion neck, and I feel fine, I feel okay, because I, I have engaged. Um, the discussion forum makes it easier, because when you speak, then sometimes people don't always understand you, because like you have these ideas in your head, but then it's like, crap, what did I say? <laughs> so like you can have time to process what you're saying, and you can write it down, and it makes complete sense to everybody. So it gave students a chance to think a little bit about what they wanted to say, to reflect a little bit. It was safer, much safer space to speak up. And this is what that student earlier on was talking about, the idea that the uh, ideas were between others could serve as a trigger. So this one's talking about, on the discussion forum, people are talking about something and it's an idea trigger. You can set you off on a particular thought. So you don't have any thoughts about something until somebody says something, and then you think, well, actually, I do have something to say or something to contribute to this. Um, so it was generative for students. And they offered them multiple perspectives. Uh, in other courses, it's not like here where we get to see each other's point of view. If we do not understand a certain topic in class, if you go to the discussion forum, you can have a deeper understanding. In this discussion forum, you can actually just ask the question and people can reply to giving you a deeper understanding. So there was a, a, a very strong sense that there were students were getting input from a variety of sources and valuing that um, in terms of their own understanding. 
It also helped develop a community around shared interests. Um, I can't see anything. I've got my glasses. Okay, okay, okay. So the lecturer is usually older, and it's easier for us to relate to someone who's closer to your age, and going through the same things. And also, if I don't understand her point, I can understand another one. Um, so it, students were developing a community of learners through <coughs> Twitter, through the online discussion, through people who had similar ideas. They found that they had a whole discussion with somebody that they agreed with, and then, well, actually, who is that person? It helped build a support network uh, that wasn't built around the authority and the hierarchy of the lecturers. Um, they got to see different views from different perspectives, and they'd see me being surprised. Oh, that's a really interesting idea. Hadn't thought about it that way before. So they saw themselves as resources, or the relationships between themselves as more resources. And it was something that was available at all times. You could go to the discussion forum and see what other people had written and commented on at any time. As I've said earlier, it um, helped reduce the hierarchies. Uh, So this played into the conversations that we were, that were developing with students and in students starting conversations about things and me engaging and letting them lead the way. Um, it also meant that I was available to them <coughs> at all times. And one of the other things they say that I don't actually give you quotes here is that they said that they worked harder in this course because I worked harder, or they felt I had worked harder, that they felt that my investment in them uh, meant that it was worth them investing time in the course. Um, and it helped, amazingly, it helped hugely with exams. A number of them said this. For this module, we had a number of things to do. There was always the opportunity to raise your marks, especially with exams. I get stressed, and I don't sleep. But for this module, I did sleep. Um, the discussion forum and the conversations in the discussion forum were there that they could go and look at for the exams. And they were kind of structured a little bit about the material <coughs> per week in the course, but people, they, they weren't um, linear, they um, went backwards and forwards and revisited things. And it was the conversations that they had with each other um, that they remembered the examples that they had each given in the discussion forum that they were then able to take into the exam. So it was very helpful for, for the exams. They remembered the bits and things that they said. And so what I want to think about is the extent to which it's the discussion forum specifically has contributed to the development of the graduate attributes. And I think it has substantially. I think there's evidence that the conversations that they have with each other, I suppose it's a no-brainer in a sense, but um, it seems to me that my course <coughs> is much better positioned to help develop or contribute to the development of graduate attributes through this emerging techno technology and through the online discussion in particular. Uh, but the students are talking about, they're talking about more about reflection. They give space to reflect on something and to reconsider things. So they would, in the debates they were having, they would sometimes change their minds. Oh, okay, you know, so-and-so said this, or yeah, maybe you have a point with that and uh, maybe I need to rethink that. Um, they also said that it made them think about things differently and that they had gave them an opportunity to grow. So my sense is, and I say it is preliminary, is that it has had quite a potentially big impact on the development of graduate attributes. I think I'm out of time. Thank you very much. How do I find, what does is, what is heteronormativity mean? Or, but they weren't, they, they really ran with it. Um, and so when some of them ran with it, others got sucked in. And when others got sucked in, I would engage and then I would talk about it in class and say, you know, that point that somebody was talking about, uh, or, you know, Sifo was talking about around Sally Gross's visit, you know, I think that's a really important thing. So it was a, it was something that got woven in, in multiple ways. And as I say, it was quite a lot of work, but I, I enjoyed it. It was, I would go home and I think, let's go on the discussion forum, let's see what they're talking about, let's see what they think, what do they think about today's lecture, and so on. So it was, I enjoyed write, uh, this, teaching this course more, much more. Um, there was a lot more affirmation of me as a teacher 
through that. Mm -hmm. so no, it was fun. Yes. You know, you sit and you do something else. And oh, by the way, you can just go and check what the mm -hmm. students are doing. But I found is that you have your regulars on, on online. And then there were others that kind of hid behind the regulars that were not, uh, you know, they would go on like one surprise. But they were not there as regulars. And I was just wondering, how does one um, bring in those other lurkers they kind of sit in the background and look and see what people are discussing and uh, almost kind of feed on them but without actually contributing mm -hmm. to the conversation. I wasn't too worried about that. Okay. Um, they got, it was 5% was what the discussion forum came. Five posts, 5%. Okay. And if you did the five posts, you got 100, you know, 100% for it, 100 marks for it. Um, and as far as I was concerned, students had different ways of contributing. So there were tutorials. They could talk in tutorials. They could talk in um, lectures and contribute in a variety of ways. So the, the, the discussion forum was a, a way that students who wanted to do that could really to go to town on it. And it was, it was very useful. So there was a student that came later on in the course. And no, she, there was this and that, and she wasn't going to be able to hand in the final essay. And you know what it's like? And there you are, deeply suspicious, because here we've got this student, and she's clearly trying to, um, she's a, a loser and a no-hoper and a scoundrel, and she's trying to exploit the situation and so on. And I said to her, so what's your name? Oh, she said, I'm Judy Lynn Langer. Oh, I said, I know you so well. We've had all these conversations on the discussion forum. So it enabled me to get to know my students much more, in a much deeper way, you know, otherwise they're faces, there's a hundred of them, there's, there's faces, I, I, I get to know not even a quarter of them by name, but the discussion forum allowed me to get to know a whole range of them better, and allowed me to treat them as individuals, it was easier to treat them as individuals rather than these faceless entities, so I think that, I think it was great success, the blog was, a, as I say, was a dead duck in the water, the discussion forum was, was awesome. Was there anything normative in the forum? So if you saw that some untoward kind of attitudes or ideas that veered far off from received notions of what you wanted them to be understanding about a concept, would you would they do that themselves? Would they regularize or they, would you step in? There was dis dis disagreement and discussion and debate, but the students um, dealt with that in very respectful ways, I thought, because there was a whole thing about homophobia at one point, and somebody was saying that, you know, somebody was making, more than one student were making quite sexist comments, and I thought, I'm leaving that alone and just seeing what happens for a bit, and other students stepped in and said, you know, that's not on, you can't, you can't be saying that, but in a very respectful way, and, I mean, one can't preach, so what, what I, I think the students, it was earlier on in the course, I think as the course went on, those students would have felt increasingly that at the very least they couldn't articulate those kinds of sentiments quite so openly in that space. Um, but there wasn't a single hostile interaction of all those, and 790 posts, I mean, it's a lot of, a lot of interactions going on. So that students all have to identify themselves in some way, a tag or, or their real name? They, they were, because it's part of the, the e-teaching, the learning management system, they are identified on there. On the Twitter, um, they, 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 can, they don't have to be identified. So they, some of them were and some of them weren't. But they talked about that in the, in the focus groups, about how they liked not having to identify themselves on Twitter. So some of them would have reservations about the discussion forum, again, about exposing themselves, as they would in tutorials, standard, box standard tutorials. Any closing comments or questions?